In this Abacus video tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create printer locations. To do this, I'll click Print Settings on the left side of the screen. Now I'll click Printer Locations. Here you can see that one printer location has been created by default. This printer location is called POS Counter. The POS Counter printer location is responsible for printing your receipts, bills, and also opening your cash drawer. I'll cover the POS Counter printer location in more detail later in the video. Here you can see that our custom printer locations list is currently empty. To add a new printer location, I'll click the new printer location button here. Now I'll enter in a printer location. Now that I've entered the printer location name, I'll just click out of the table. Now you can see that I've created a printer location called drinks. Now that I've created the drinks printer location, I'll create one more for the kitchen. To do this, I'll click new printer location. Now I'll enter in the name. Now that I've entered the name, I'll click out of the table and you can see that I've created two printer locations. I'll be assigning all of my drinks products to the drinks printer location and all of my food items to the kitchen printer location. Now that I've set up my two printer locations, I'll click save. Now that I've clicked save, I want to assign my products to these new printer locations. To do this, I'll click products here and then I'll click products here. First, I'll start with assigning all of my drinks products to the drinks printer location. To do this, I'll filter by the product category and find all of the drinks. Now that I've selected my drinks categories, you can see all of the drinks products displayed here. To select all of these products, I'll click the Select All button here. Now I'm going to apply the drinks printer location to all of the selected products. To do this, I'll click Settings. From here, I'll click Printer Locations and then I'll select drinks. Now that I've selected the drinks printer location, I'll click add. You can see here that the drinks printer location has been assigned to all of my drinks products. To remove the current filters I have applied, I can click the X icon here, or I can click the green reset filter button. Now that I can see all of my products again, I'll filter for my burger and sides categories. Here you can see all of the products in the sides and burger categories. Now I'll select all of these products by clicking the Select All button here. Now that I've done that, I'll go back into Settings. You can see that the previous printer location I applied to products is displayed here. I'll remove this as I want to assign the Kitchen printer location. Now I'll select Kitchen and then click the blue Add button. Now that we've created two printer location and assigned products to those printer locations, I'll show you how to configure a printer on the POS. Now that we're on the pause, I'll do a master sync to sync the changes I made on the back end. Before we start configuring our printer, I'll show you a quick way to check whether or not a product has an assigned printer location. I can check this by holding my finger down on a product. Here you can see that the double egg burger has the kitchen printer location assigned. Now I'll show you an example of a product that doesn't have a printer location assigned. I'll just go to my sides tab and then hold my finger down on the cheese sticks product. Any product that does not have a printer location assigned to it will not print out on order dockets. It will still print out on receipts, however. Now I'll show you how to configure a printer. To do this, just tap the printer icon at the top of the screen. To find a printer that is connected to the network, just tap the refresh button. Now you can see that a printer has been discovered on the network. The green tick lets you know that the printer is connected to the same network as the iPad. Now that I've discovered my printer, I can turn it on by tapping the toggle switch here. Now that my printer is enabled, I'll tap the three dots here to configure the printer. If you delete a printer, you'll have to tap refresh to discover it again and also configure the settings again from scratch. From these options, I'll tap settings. Now that we're on the settings page, first I'll show you how to rename a printer. At the top here, you can see the current name of the printer. To rename the printer, just tap on the name. For my example, I'll enter in POS. Now that I've entered the name for the printer, I'll tap OK. If you have multiple printers, it's a good idea to name them so you can easily identify them. Next, I'll do a test print to check if the printer is working. To do this, I'll tap the blue print button. If the test print was successful, you should have a small docket that printed out. If you do a test print and a docket doesn't print out, Make sure that the printer is turned on and that your cables are connected firmly. 
Also make sure that there's paper in the printer and that there's no paper jam. The next setting we'll look at is set printer as default. If you have multiple printers, you can select which one will be the default printer in case any of the others go offline or run out of paper. If you've purchased a printer buzzer to plug into the back of one of your production printers, you can set the number of buzzers that it will make here. For an example, I'll set the number of buzzers to two. When an order docket is printed to that printer, the printer will buzz twice. For this example, I'll set the number of buzzers to zero. The next part of the printer configuration is selecting which printer locations will print out to this specific printer. This printer location is responsible for printing out your receipts, bills, and also opening your cash drawer. If you have a cash drawer plugged into this specific printer, you will need to enable the POS counter printer location. In my example, I have a cash drawer plugged into the printer, so I'll enable POS counter. Next, I have the two printer locations I created in the back end and assigned products to. Since I only have one printer, I'll enable both of these to print on this printer. For example, if I have an order for a drink and a burger, I'll have an order docket for the drink and then the paper will cut, then a second docket will print out for the burger. If for example I had three printers, I could have one printer for the POS counter, which would print my receipts, bills and also open my cash drawer. I could have a second printer to print out all of my drinks orders, and I could have a third printer to print out orders in the kitchen. If that were the case, I would disable these printer locations here, and then go back to the printer list. I could then go into other printers and enable a specific printer location. You'll be able to open your cash drawer by tapping open here. If your printer runs out of paper or has a jam, you'll see a build up of print tasks here. Currently you can see that the number is zero. If a printer has failed to print an order or a receipt, you'll see the printer icon flash here. When you see the icon flashing, it's a good idea to check if there's a paper jam or if the printer has run out of paper. Once you've resolved the issue, you can tap print tasks here. Any built up print tasks will be displayed on the left side of the screen. You can then choose to resume or delete individual print tasks.